the challenge for us and Boeing is to determine when is this aircraft going to go back into service? I mean, Boeing keep missing their delivery dates. Uh, we're now not expecting the first of our MAX aircraft until March or April of next year, uh, which means we're getting very tight for summer of 2020. We'll have less capacity next year, probably a stronger yield performance as a result. But until the aircraft is back flying, we really can't finalise what our costs have been as a result of these delays. So it's a, it's a, it's a dialogue that continues with Boeing. But I think we in Ryanair, who are the largest 737 customer in Europe, and Boeing are focused and working hard to get this uh, aircraft back flying in North America probably first, hopefully this side of Christmas, more likely in January or February, and then uh, flying in Ryanair by March, April. Mike, look, I don't want to rake over old ground, but look, you, you comments on, and battle. You do it so well. All right, let's do this then. OK, 2017, we're now in an era where the computer does most of the flying. They're skilled professionals, but are they hard worked? No. So basically, you were criticised for saying it's an easy job. And, and you're right, the computer does do most of the flying. But do you think that's where the problem is, that actually this is where this is all emanated from? And I'm talking about the industry, Mike. I'm not talking about Ryanair. Do you think we need to step back and actually have pilots who can handle more situations now and have less computer technology? I don't think so. You know, look, there's been two tragic uh, accidents with, with the 737, with the MAX. Uh, the MCAS software system wasn't well explained by Boeing, I think, to pilots generally who were flying the aircraft. But it has been flying successfully in North America for over 12 months without any incident. I think the MCAS system is now well known by pilots. We put most of our senior pilots, we have a, we're the only airline with a MAX simulator here in Europe. We put most of our senior pilots, the training pilots through it. They love the aircraft. They love the MCAS system once everybody understands what it does. Uh, and I think that's one of the issues on the return to service is not everybody's confident the aircraft is perfectly safe. It's a great aircraft. Um, but the, the training on the way back into service, whether it's computer based or sim based, pilots will need to be more aware of what the MCAS actually does. It's another aid to flying. But flying continues to be extraordinarily safe. The safety record of the industry over the last number of years, despite the two uh, tragedies that befell Ethiopian and, uh, and Lion Air, it has never been safer to fly, uh, as witnessed by the thousands, uh, tens of thousands of flights that take off on a daily basis. But the good thing about this industry is it shares information about when there are problems. True. It's not like, say, the medical industry that has been accused of hushing stuff up historically. This is an industry that shares. Do you think one thing that we've learned from this is it's that the manufacturers are too close to the regulators, Michael? I'm not sure that. I don't think that's fair. I mean, I think there has been an identifiable issue with the software system here. Uh, lessons have been learned, I presume, both by the regulators and by the manufacturers. I think maybe the regulators need to be a little bit tougher on the manufacturers. The manufacturers have a duty, uh, I think, when they produce new products or new software to educate the, pilot, the airlines and the pilots as to what the, the existence of that software, what it does. But this is still a great aircraft. This is an aircraft that has 4% more seats, 16% lower fuel consumption. You know, it is going to be the game changer for us for the next 10 years. So we can't wait to see it back in the air, flying safely and flying millions of people on an annual basis. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.